I'm going to be pretty clear. I am definitely on the side of anti-lolly more so than freedom of art. But jiggle, 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 jiggle. I won't stop people from consuming the media they like, given no actual harm is being done, even if I disagree with it. But I do wonder, is it possible for antis to sort of come to an understanding with Lollicon? And I've, whew. we're going over a Nasagi video, depressed Nasagi. You don't miss, he's talking about lollies. And people go after, or not, they don't go after him. They go to him for a lot of good insight. A lot of the bigger people know of him or not. When I say bigger, I don't mean like corpo. I mean like um, Rev, Kyo, False. Like the people around those sizes, they know of him. He's the VTuber historian. They talked about him. We found Lolly Neutrality. I don't know if we have, but honestly, I, I kind of want to minimize the amount of hate spread in the world. And I don't think we should be calling lolly cons pedophiles because they like, just because they like art that's depicting stuff I don't like, There's no actual harm being done. Triggered. Nasagi. I used the phrase Japanimation in front of a youth, a youth some time ago and he said I should touch grass. <laughs> oh my god, there are there are so many so many weird memes that are hard super duper hard to explain. And like you really can't explain unless you're in the communities and just consuming them eventually context clues give it oh my god okay Nasagi I value your takes let's see what you have to say I'm feeling a bit dangerous today and when it comes to choosing the best way to attract danger one way is to have some semblance of discourse and apply nuances to certain topics instead of painting them as black and white because in that's what I love to do too and that's why I like you Nasagi the internet nuance is dangerous Twitter freaks are going to shut you down and morally grandstand before you even begin to speak when you do this and everyone else is hopefully open-minded enough to try and listen I know Hanime. Getting hate for this when I didn't even say something like all lolly fans are evil because I don't judge or generalize the entire group. Sexualizing minors and artists, okay, then unfollow, block me if you can help. What, what is actually the problem with that take though? Aside from the seek help line, because I don't, I don't really have any. I, you know what? Stand before you even begin to speak when you do this, and everyone else is hopefully open minded enough to try and listen. You choose which one you are in this video because the VTuber trope I'd like to take a shot at talking about next is quite sensitive to the internet. That trope is the lolly. Now, contrary to what many people are going to think, this video isn't going to contain anything related to the debate of whether lolly or shota lovers are considered pedophiles or not. This is more of a breakdown on the lolly trope in VTubing. What it is, why it's so controversial, but at the same time, why it's so successful and how you can make it successful. Help. Good. I actually didn't really want to get into that because it's a fucking pointless argument of whether or not it is actual pedophilia 
at least it's pointless for me to jump into that because I don't, I'm not an expert on it. I'm just a triggered SJW. Oh, the biggest VTuber in the world is a lolly. The biggest VTuber in Indonesia is a lolly. And a shit ton of influential VTubers openly express their appreciations for lollies as well. And that alone just speaks volumes to how popular this trope actually is despite the controversy around it. So before we talk... I, I would say that the popularity is definitely because of how, you know... A lot of VTuber fans are anime fans, and a lot of anime also plays into that trope. So I'm willing to bet that, you know, that definitely influences the streamer and content medium that, um, what's it, is so heavily influenced by anime. Talk about the lolly, I think it's imperative to understand what defines an actual lolly. A lolly is often defined differently depending on who you ask. Some people think the lolly is based on body type and not age, but most would actually specify that they're actual children. Both of these, while not necessarily correct all the time, also isn't necessarily wrong either. Let's have a brief history lesson to give you a better context. Back in 1955, there was a Russian novel called Lolita about a man who has sexual relationships with someone significantly younger than him. I have heard of that book. I haven't read it. A few decades later, the term Lolita complex was invented and is described as someone who is sexually attracted to younger girls. See, the girl in the novel was 12 years old, and even though the term Lolita does not explicitly state that it refers to pubescent girls, the book it is derived from gives that implication. But because of Japanese media loosely tossing the word lolly in a lot of its characters and tropes, and even referring to characters with a PD body type as a lolly, despite them not being underage, the definition became blurred. As yeah, that's it's kind of a big issue, at least with me. Because I am fully okay with somebody with a petite body style or like a VTuber with a petite body style that wanted to share, not say for work, art of that of their VTuber that they really appreciate. I would let them post that to my server. I wouldn't, however, let a fan post art of somebody else. That I would have a problem with, especially if the character themselves is not only underage, but looks younger than a fucking teenager. With fictional characters, there is definitely a gray area. So I personally don't care if they like look teenager and up for a fictional character. Don't ever fucking sexualize actual minors. That's the thing. Especially because stuff like 1,000-year-old vampires and big-boobed lolly goddesses exist. Now, like I said, both of these definitions are not correct all the time, but don't have to be wrong either. For example, if age is the more important factor, then Yuko Littner from Gurren Lagann and Violet from Violet Evergarden... You know, I don't, I don't actually know that much about Shondo, to be honest. I saw they made... Um... I saw that in a clip that they had mentioned they had role played as good Hitler in a Civ stream, and then I made the tweet, um, the lolly is also a Nazi, shocker. But aside from that, I have no idea who the fuck Shondo is. Both 14-year-old girls would be considered a lolly, but you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone that would agree with that. Hell, most anime girls are like 15 to 16-year-olds, so in Western definition, everyone else should be a lolly when we base it solely on this. And conversely, if body type is the more important factor of the definition, then Taiga from Toradora would be considered a lolly too. And while there's a lot of people that would say she is, there's an equal amount of people that would argue she isn't, including me. Hell, if this is the case, fucking Pipa Pipkin would have to be a lolly. In any case, nobody can just agree on what constitutes as an actual lolly. People will defend lollies and think they're just short women even though sometimes that's not the case. And other people will fight against lollies and just call them children even though that's not the case sometimes too. And I think that's the reason why the political debate surrounding the topic struggles to find a middle ground. Me personally, I think a lolly is decided on three factors. Behavior, body type and design, and age. 
Hmm. Interesting. 60% behavior, mannerisms, some no one can characterize as sexual, but the sexuality view of being conveyed childishly applies. Speech and style quirks. Yeah, honestly, here it. With fictional characters, what does it actually matter? It honestly, I would say, play more of a role if it was like a VTuber using an underaged VTuber getting into it. But I'm willing to bet everybody would agree that a minor wanting to get into VTubing should not go into lewd tubing no matter what genre they wanted to get into because you know we all agree don't don't fucking let kids go into those sexual situations we all agree that's bad with the first being the most important factor the second being secondary and the third not really these are the factors i consider whenever i try to categorize a character as a lolly but ultimately, the context of the media also matters in judging what is considered a lolly or not. So external factors always has to be considered. Obviously, I can't just list out every lolly that I know in anime and judge whether they are or they aren't. This is a VTuber video after all. The rules are a bit different. Most, if not all, lolly VTubers are adult women that are actually petite and short IRL. And somehow they still get harassed even though they're just staying true to their physique. That is honestly true i i've done that to somebody i've made that mistake i've burned that bridge unintentionally and i don't know if they'll ever respond to my apology but we 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 can't turn away people that are actual adults living with those bodies that don't have appreciation of their bodies. They, like, they don't get that representation aside from lolly art. So I am extremely sympathetic to that situation because they're adults. Don't let children have sex. Sucks that some in the G GOP would debate that. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. The rules are different because for one, if they aren't actually that young, they have to emulate childlike and immature behaviors in order to sell the kayfabe. Hell, some have lolly avatars but aren't- I wouldn't say you have to... You, They wouldn't have to, what's it, do the stuff for the kayfabe. They, they can be gremlins, look at Vivi-chan, I really fucking like her she's short she's cute she is petite but she doesn't want to be called the lolly and she does not want to be sexualized in any way whatsoever so like that's got to be respected too right necessarily childlike at all too in any case, if you've been in the internet long enough, this emoji is usually associated with them. And the reason why that is, is that the lolly invokes a certain kind of emotion in people. This emotion is called cute aggression. A massive urge to just do things to something so unbearably cute, normally an animal or a younger person without intending to cause them any harm. More often than not, people like the lolly trope without having any sort of sexual attraction or it being their sexual preference. It can happen, which I'll talk about later, but the primary reason for people being drawn to lollies is mostly because of the cuteness factor. And while cute aggression isn't exclusive to the lolly because it can also apply to any VTuber that just has this overwhelming aura of smug and nuisance like Sakamata Chloe, it's mostly associated with lolly VTubers due to their nature of being childlike. But you see, lolly VTubers don't actually have to act like a child. They just have to have immature traits that's commonly found in children. 
and it's the execution of these traits that decide whether or not a VTuber will be considered a lolly. The most common attributes are high-pitched voices, irresponsibility, and most importantly, being petite and naive. The petiteness is important for obvious reasons. Personally, I would think the uh, naivety would be the biggest part. The immaturity, yeah, sure. Like, you want to sell that kayfabe, but as long as you do also indicate that you do have a mature mindset in other ways, like, you don't even have to do it constantly. You just kind of subtly signal at it. That's more than enough for me. What do I care? Reasons, but let's talk about the naivety part because this is relatively more complex. Naivety isn't exclusive to the young, nor are lollies the only VTuber trope that can use it. For example, the Seiso has naivety as an important trait as well. Naivety is just more commonly found in young people, and the reason why people are so drawn to it is because it's disarming and cute. There's a certain kind That's fucking true. People aren't... I would honestly say... From... From my full understanding, or, yeah, from my 100% full understanding of everything on the context of Lolly, people, the majority of people that like Gura, that follow Gura, are not because they're physically attract, or are not because they want to bang her uh, VTuber, but because she's funny and she's cute, and her design is simple yet eye-catching, which is the best kind of VTuber design. ...kind of appeal to an innocent, ignorant person, and it incites an instinctual must-protect feeling that ultimately leads to the cute aggression. This youthful trait is often associated with happiness and everything right with the world. Ignorance is bliss after all. People get cynical the more they learn about the harsh realities of life. So seeing an ignorant, innocent ball of sunshine just makes you want them to stay that way. While the trait itself is naivety, the effect it produces is called moe. And again, this is... Oh, I never actually saw the full definition of moe. Context of Japanese popular culture, the quality of a fictional female character, being youthfully innocent and vulnerable in an idealized way. Perceived as eliciting feelings or affection, of affection or protectiveness. Ah, okay. Is the main selling point for lolly VTubers. Gura exemplifies this trope more than anyone, not just because she's the biggest VTuber in the world, but because she's a fucking dumbass. If you have heard of her stories, you probably know that Gura is often mistaken as a child by other people according to her, is small enough to be considered a lolly not just in character but also in real life, but also has the attributes that give her childlike qualities which can invoke this massive surge of cute aggression. Her character has all the childlike traits that makes the lolly trope work. She has a rather high voice and speaks like an absolute zoomer, she gets into a lot of situations that only a child would get into, is quite emotional and open to a lot of things, and most importantly, she's pretty fucking dumb at certain fields. She makes very simple spelling mistakes, <laughs> is absolute garbage at math, often relies on other, more responsible members in myth or adults to make decisions for her, is easily dumbfounded, and is quite meek. All of these are attributes commonly found in a child. In fact, being a dumbass is a key part of Gura's character appeal as a VTuber. She wears that trait on her sleeve and is proud of it. That is very true. Like, I don't actively follow Gura, but the stuff that I have seen of her, like clips and stuff, she has really made me laugh with the, I, I would say, playing up of the quote-unquote funny dumbass trait, trope. Like, seriously, she is funny. There's a reason she's the biggest VTuber. It doesn't matter if all of these are an act, because regardless if she's actually this naive or not, Gura sells the illusion really well and has communicated to her fans not just in words, but also in action and past stories that she's actually this naive. Gura just talking in a goo goo gaga manner wouldn't be able to sell the illusion of the lolly enough. 
because whatever act she set up since her debut has to be put on consistently throughout her entire streaming career to actually sell that trope. And the reason why she's the best example of this aspect in the lolly trope isn't just because she's the biggest and most successful VTuber, but because she has done exactly that. She has hmm. sold the illusion really well. Gura has convinced her entire fan base that she's an actual dumbass lolly that must be protected in real life. Hell, people think Gura is so defenseless and immature that they literally threw shit at Kali for inviting her to a party and leaving her to her own devices. The first few stories and Calliope invited Gura to a party and then didn't spend the entire party with Gura. Oh, the shame, the horror. Can cancel her. Cancel her. And acts she put up on debut were half convincing. And most people thought that it was just an act for funny haha moments. But her being this consistently naive throughout the years has literally had people wondering if she's actually as dumb as she shows she is. And that is the perfect execution of the naivety appeal. It doesn't matter if the lolly is actually dumb or not. What matters is that the audience thinks they're dumb and loves them for it. Which in retrospect sounds a bit weird because someone's idiocy being consumed as entertainment and even in... It's more complicated than that. There's a bit more to it. Please share your, share your thoughts. But it's not as bad as they made it out to be. I'm curious. Oh, uh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Courage, because it's cute and funny, sounds very degrading and dystopian. Oh. Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, naivety and horror <laughs> isn't just the sole appeal of the lolly. See, young people are full of themselves, even when they're absolute idiots, and for lolly VTubers, emulating this can be very fun and effective in entertaining your viewers. If naive innocence is the way to enhance the cute part in cute aggression, cheeky brattiness is the way to enhance the aggression part. When people are full of themselves, they become annoying. So when lollies showcase this attribute, once annoyance and once endearment clash in this beautiful, chest-squeezing, insightful feeling of just wanting to squish their fucking cheeks and correct them. Gura also showcases this attribute. Aside from being a dumb shark, she's also pretty cheeky and sassy. While she sucks in some fields, she is actually really good in others. See, Gura is dumb, but she's not stupid. You don't become the number one VTuber in the world just by pure coincidence. Oh, you're She's fine. a great gamer than one might think, knows which buttons to press with her chat, has a sharp tongue, and 100% understands the internet more than a lot of people. She knows how to piss people off well and chooses scenarios where she can end up as the butt of the joke. Like Pekora, Gura charges into random situations and speaks her mind before thinking. And she does so with the utmost confidence a lot of the time, so when it backfires, whether genuine or by design, people get aggressive and proceed to tease the absolute hell out of her. However, unlike Pekora, Gura- People she invited over were drinking and rowdy and she wasn't expecting them to act like that way or something. So Gura left on her own around those people. I'm better. Oh, okay. So like- from just that, I get the vibes that Callie was just wanting to have a party. But wasn't expecting it to get too rowdy, and then it ended up getting too rowdy. Okay. ...is a lolly and has all the charms associated with it. So the way people laugh at Pekora for being dumb is different than the way people laugh at Gura when she's being dumb. Now, there's different ways of being cheeky. Aside from having great banter with your chat, you can also incorporate cheeky sassiness into your kayfabe or character itself rather than your personality. See, some people just don't know how to be sassy and smug. They're too soft that way and it's just not in their personality. So if you transplant... That's true. A lot of people need to actually figure out how to get a lot better with their sass. Get... Sass is funny. Just a miscommunication that could have led to a stressful situation, but it ended up leading to nothing. Oh, yeah. Miscommunication's a bitch. 
plant that energy into your kayfabe instead, you'd do well as a lolly and will actually help you in the long run. One of the most effective ways to transplant this into your kayfabe is being a chuni. Chunis incite a lot of emotions. For one, it incites a part of that ignorant innocence appeal because when you're young and a chuni, you shamelessly show off your imagination and- This is half remembered. That's totally fair. I wasn't taking it as like, uh, this literally happened. It's just, this is what I assume happened given my- Given the context, I know. Let your creativity run wild. It may be cringe and you may be judged, but deep down, there's some degree of appreciation and awe people can give you for being that shameless. You don't care about people's opinions because you're dumb and ignorant. You don't care about conforming to society or embarrassing yourself because you're just having fun and you're happy. And while you may not know much, you know that what matters in life is having fun and being happy. A stark contrast to everyone else in the world that is riddled with worldly problems and adult responsibilities. God, I love Chuni Bio. I don't, I don't know what that is. My favorite, o, my favorite OC that I play is Dylan Carly. Nice. Hey, if you're thinking about getting into streaming, you should. It's fun to try out. Global Conquest is joined up using Global Conquest. Who doesn't love that? Meanwhile, you are just doing your own thing. A free spirit basking in unbound joy. People will see this behavior and wish for you to keep being that way. Fans will recognize that old spark they used to have in you and will want it to keep burning. An ultimately fruitless attempt to bring back even a semblance of the youthful happiness they used to have. Their happiness is your responsibility. Oh, when you think you have magic powers but you don't, something like Megumi. Oh, okay. A symbol of the joy they should and could have had as a child if they just decided to embrace the cringe. If they just decided to be themselves. Or, you know, people just like them and go... <laughs> However, we're not even done yet because all this time we were ignoring the elephant in the room. See, everything I've talked about so far is the appeal of the lolly VTuber without its sexual aspect. Because like I said, most people actually like lollies without any sort of sexual attraction. Again, Moe is the main selling point of the lolly for most people, unlike the mommy yep. or the coomer baiter who has sexual appeal as part of theirs. The term don't loot the lolly exists for this reason. People wish- Wait, there's actually a term? Huh. Ravi have- Ravi have- Ravioli, ravioli, don't loot the lolly. To preserve the youthful ignorance and moe that's inherent in the lolly. But unfortunately, some people like it spicy. Some people like seeing this youthful ignorance solely for the reason that it feels good when they see it crumble. Some people like breaking taboos. And as such, people find pleasure in defiling the innocence of the lolly. And most often than not, it's the sexual kind of pleasure. Or, you know, some men just like their women petite. Who am I to judge? I'm personally of the medium is premium opinion. But I'm not going to go over the sexualization of the lolly in the general sense because I'd really just like to talk about VTubers. Everyone else can go argue on Twitter if they want to talk about that. You see, in the VTuber scene or in Japanese media in general, lollies often have sexual undertones or proudly flexes their tender lolly appeal in the faces of the masses despite the act being so controversial. Gura is yet again a big example of this. Gura doesn't explicitly horny bait or use her body as a key component of her appeal, but she does not shy away from utilizing that whenever it suits the moment or whenever she feels like it. Like I said, Gura understands the internet deeper than most people, and it just so happens that the internet is full of sexual innuendos and lewd jokes, most of which Gura is familiar with. There are entire compilations of Gura being yabai. In fact, her panties being shown in her 3D debut and teasing the audience about it is the most replayed, clipped, and viewed part of that stream. Hell, she has an entire Shocker. animation that has her naked and running around in the first half of the video. Gura knows how to use her sexual appeal wisely. She does it in the most opportune moments and uses it sparingly, ensuring that when it does happen, it's more effective and that it's more cute and funny than arousing. And in doing that, despite the shark being very open about her sexual appeal, her sexual appeal is not a key part of her character or her presentation. If I... Even if I, her presentation... Thank you. I... I actually didn't know that about Kura. I actually... That actually really makes me respect her more, honestly. ...has her half-naked a lot of the time. 
The science behind Gura's conception of her character and how she delivers her act and kayfabe as a VTuber is a fucking masterclass. And I think I might have to deconstruct the absolute genius of her character in the near future. There oh my god, please do, because just going in with it. Actually, kind of, but not really, Blaze. Going into why Gura is so goddamn successful could honestly be very, very beneficial. You've touched on it a little bit, Nasagi, but holy shit, you could... I think a lot of people could really benefit from your insight on that specific subject. Please do it. There's a science to be explored here, people, and I want to get in there. In any case, Giggity. lollies have to be rather subtle about their sex appeal more than normal. Not just in their behavior and kayfabe, but also in their character design. A lolly VTuber with a full-blown bikini and shamelessly showing off their body parts to appear to lollicons is bad design. Fucking obviously. That just tells me you're insecure and you're just banking on lollicon coomers to make your money. That tells me that you have a personality as flat as your chest. But a lolly <laughs> VTuber with an option to show their shoulders pits or tease their thighs instead of having it full hog is a good way to show the audience that you're not afraid to use your sex appeal but that you're not intending for that to be your main selling point. It's just something to spice things up. As a design standpoint, Gura pretty much aces it again. This is Gura's <laughs> main outfit. This is her second outfit. It is always about Gura, isn't it? She is the queen lolly. This is her third outfit. The first one is standard, the second one is cute, but the third is regal but also evocative in a certain sense. It is. The the over the shoulder look is very evocative. It gives you or it attracts your eye to there and it makes you think that um or it it starts leading the mind into more arousing directions. Where is the best lolly? Honestly, I can't argue with that one. Yet none of them are inherently sexy. From a design standpoint, Gura has a pretty good justification for showing off her skin. Gura can use her sex appeal and justify being naked and lewd because in her lore, she's an Atlantean princess that's trying to fit in with the surface world. She washed up on some random beach one day in her attempt to explore the land and she has no concept of nudity being inappropriate. This allows her to have outfits, portrayals, and designs that show more of her skin, but also allows her to- Yeah, I, I was referring to um, how my eyes are attracted when seeing the over-the-shoulder kinds of top. And I'm willing- or kinds of blouses, whatever. And I'm willing to bet I'm not the only one out of eight billion people that think that way. ...to act pretty fucking stupid when it comes to lewd stuff. That's her excuse, and it's a pretty damn good one. You can have all sorts of reasons to be lewd as a lolly. It could be for lore reasons, or kayfabe, or because you just want your character to be a pervert. But the one reason you must not be lewd for is that you wanted people to come on you during stream. You have to justify being lewd. This doesn't just apply to lollies, it applies to VTubing in general. But the reason why this must be understood for lolly VTubers more so than anyone is because... Am I lost? No, I'm not lost. I'm enjoying Nusaki's video. Twitter is going to be up on your ass about it. That's if you care for Twitter's opinions, of course. But again, if you cannot justify your lewdness and just go full hog, you won't be appealing to anyone aside from lolicon coomers. And trust me, that's a kind of niche that a lot of VTubers need to be wary about. I mean, it's profitable, don't get me wrong, but it's not worth it, dude. That being said, the lolly trope is popular and valid. Lots of VTubers want to take on a lolly form as their internet persona and no one has any right to reject those people. It could be that they are petite short women IRL. It could be that they just want to roleplay. The numbers don't lie and the numbers state that lollies are profitable and that they're effective as a trope. Lollies were always here and will never go away. In fact, there will be more and no amount of harassment is going to stop that. Anyway, yeah, that's about it. See ya. Yeah, like I've said before, Nasaki doesn't miss. What's a coomer? Uh, somebody that masturbates to certain things. It gets, it gets um, thrown at tons of different contexts. It's it's mostly just people who think more with their dick instead of their brain, so to speak.
But yeah, Usagi had some really great points there. I mean, hell, he's even helped push my, um, he's, he's helped change my opinion on Lolly. Cyrus has as well. Yeah, Dick Thinker. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna. I, I have had Joker moments where I, I've said less than ideal things about lollies. Am I going to make like a public apology video about it? No. Am I going to correct my behavior and not repeat it in the future? Yeah. Reminds me of the Seinfeld episode where Jerry is playing chess between his brain and his dick. I don't think I've saw that Seinfeld episode. But yeah, Usagi has a very good point. Lollies were here first. Just, you know, the, the lolly is, um, an anime trope, and that anime trope carried forward into the VTuber communities because, you know, surprise, surprise, people that use anime avatars to make content with are influenced by anime. Who would have fucking guessed that one? 